in this video we are going to learn about topics related to evolution like theories of evolution and heredity so let's start by having a chapter summary about voyage of discovery natural selection and evolution charles darwin developed a theory of evolution based on the mechanism of natural selection Amazingly around the same time Alfred Russel Wallace independently developed essentially the same theory Amazingly around the same time Alfred Russel Wallace developed independently developed essentially the same theory the two theories were communicated to a meeting of the Linnaean Society of London on July 1 1858 in this chapter we have outlined evolutionary thinking before the mid 1850s including ideas on natural selection in order to place darwin and valens theory of a mechanism of evolution in context and to explain why this two british naturalists were searching for evidence that organisms change over time although their social educational and financial backgrounds differed enormously voyages of discovery and collections exposed both men to be diverse yet related related fauna and flora of the topics darwin's voyage around the world on hms beagle and valens trips to brazil malaysia and indonesia today valens is considered as having begun the study of biogeography which explains the distribution and abundance of species around the globe the lives of the two men are outlined both because they are fascinated and as backgrounded to the discussion of the theory of evolution by natural selection let's have an introduction accumulating knowledge of fossils in the first half of the 19th century led many to accept the concept that species change through time indeed lamarck proposed a mechanism use and disuse of organs during an individual's lifetime to explain how much change came about while charles darwin considered that lamarck inheritance played a role in evolution he and alfred wallis independently conceived of natural selection as the primary mechanism responsible for evolution although our current knowledge of genetics has defined our understanding of the mechanism of evolution natural selection acting on natural variation remains the primary basis for evolutionary change of organisms features then evolution by natural selection before darwin and wallis lamarck darwin and wallis were not the first to think about change in organisms over time such thinking goes back to ancient greek and the scala naturae or great chain of being as a fixed progression of steps from lowest to highest stages in the 19th century Buffon saw natural selection and artificial selection of domesticated animals and plants by humans as agents responsible for the extinction of species but not for the regeneration of new species. Buffon maintained that new species arose by spontaneous generation and that differences in the consideration under which spontaneous generation occurred resulted in differences between species. Later in the 19th century, Lamarck sought a systematic, comprehensive and materialistic explanation of the diversity of organisms on Earth. In Lamarck's theory, environmental effects stimulated the production of new varieties in an adaptive direction, resulting in organisms that were better adapted to their environments. According to this theory, imperfect or defective species did not go extinct. organisms always could adapt their way out of extinction histories of evolutionary thinking before darwin and wallis are usually written as a progression from lamarck's theory of the inheritance of acquired characters to darwin's theory of natural selection with the passing road node to wallis early in the 19th century however a number of natural historians separated the origin of variants variations from the forces responsible for preserving variations by using a principle of natural selection to explain changes within species among these was scottish american physician medical researcher printer and bookseller william charles wells and scottish landowner horticulturist and self-proclaimed evolutionary theorist patrick matthew 
Matthew who remained active after the origin of species was published in 1859 claimed he had introduced the concept of natural selection in 1831 to emphasize the point Matthew had discovered the principle of natural selection printed on his calling cards in later editions of the origin of species Darwin acknowledged the prior developments of a theory of evolution by natural selection a number of which are outlined later along with Darwin's comments on them so proposals of evolution by natural selection before Darwin and Wallace as noted in the text neither Darwin nor Wallace was the first to propose that organisms evolved Darwin's grandfather published a theory of evolution in 1794 and 1796 and Robert Chambers provides provided considerable evidence for evolution in a book published anonymously in 1844 it is generally concluded however that a theory of evolution by natural selection become known with Darwin and Wallace's publication in 1858 and Darwin's book in 1859 Yet, as introduced in the text, a number of early 19th century natural historians, notably William Wells and Patrick Matthew, foreshadowed theories of evolution by natural selection as neither produced sufficient evidence, their ideas seeming, seemed highly speculative. Furthermore, their papers appeared in obscure publications and so did not attract attention. This is also true for the publication of Gregor Mendel in the Mechanism for Inheritance in 1866. Darwin acknowledged the prior studies in those editions of Origin of Species that included a historical skeleton for prior work on evolutionary theory. Then William Wells and after Patrick Matthew, then William Lawrence and Edward Blyth. These are also some scientists who invented this earlier Darwin and Wallace. So Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace are almost contemporaries and both active in research. Charles Robert Darwin was 14 years older than Alfred Russell Wallace, who outlived Darwin by 31 years. Wallace esteemed Darwin as his senior and leader in the study of evolution. an attitude that explains much of the dynamic of their interaction and shared a reputation Wallace who died in 1913 witnessed the impact of the theory of evolution by natural selection for over a half a century after its publication in 1859 his last word on evolution was in an interview published 2 weeks after his death His last book on evolution was published in March 1913, 8 months before he died. So in 1908, Wallis received the highest honor, the English Monarch Can Peshaw appointment to the Order of Merit, an exclusive order restricted to 24 living recipients. In the same year, Wallis and Darwin posthumously received the first and only Darwin Wallis gold medal. Struck by the Linnaean Society of London to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the publication of their statements on the theory of evolution by natural selection. Given the scuppling of their careers, the early lives of these two Englishmen were vastly different. Darwin was born to a wealthy upper middle class British family whose fortunes derived largely from his father, Robert Darwin, and paternal grandfathers, Rans Miss Darwin. both of whom were prosperous physicians. Darwin was in Victorian palace, a gentleman, a man of good social position, in possession of wealth and leisure. By this definition, Wallace was not a gentleman. Born in Wales to a respectable but poor middle class family, Wallace was forced to leave his grammar school at age 13 because of his father's financial difficulties, becoming a apprenticed as a surveyor, surveyor to one of his older brothers, self-educating by attending lectures at the London Machinic Institute. Wallace worked as a survive, surveyor until age 20. In contrast, at 
age 16, Charles left grammar school for Edinburgh University to study medicine. Surgical procedures at that time were dreadfully brutal, having witnessed two operations, one of them on a child. Darwin realized he could never become a surgeon. He transferred to Cambridge University with the intention of becoming a minister of the Church of England. Being a country person was considered a respectable position for a person drawn to the study of natural world. However, his interests were neither in academic nor in clerical, clerical pursuits, but in hunting, collecting, natural history, botany, and geology. Darwin despised the formal and classical education at Cambridge and was no more than a mediocre student. His father, who believed Charles had betrayed the family trust of industry, Serious professionalism castigated him. You care for nothing but shooting dogs and rat catching, and you will be a disgrace to yourself and all your family. So, Wallace wrote, This is, I believe, the first instance known as a flying frog. And it is very interesting to Darwinism, as shown that the variability of the toes which have been already modified for purposes of swimming and also climbing have been taken advantage of enabling an avian species to pass through an air like a flying lizard. So here some of the species discovered by Wallace in his expedition to Malaysia and Indonesia, a little paradise kingfisher and Wallace golden birdwing butterfly collected by Wallace in Indonesia, named by him Wallace Flying Frog, Racophorus nigro, Pelamatis, discovered in Sarawak and painted by them. So these are some organisms which, you know, he later contributed for some major theories. So a career naval officer, Robert Fitzroy, rose to become vice Admiral, an extraordinarily able navigator, Fitzroy pioneered meteorological forecasting and the development of barometers to measure atmospheric pressure. He was governor of New Zealand for two years. Next, voyage of discovery, Charles Darwin. In 1831, Darwin was able to put off further study for the ministry and set off on his now famous voyage around the world on HMS Beagle. The voyage of the Beagle lasted almost five years from December 27 to 1831 to October 2, 1836. The traditional view has been that during this time Darwin transformed himself from a casual amateur into a dedicated geologist and naturalist, although the historian of science James II maintains that by the summer after graduating from Cambridge in 1831, Darwin was at 22 probably the best educated naturalist of his age in Britain. Darwin's letters recounting many of the observations made during the voyage along with his collections of plants, animals, fossils, minerals excited considerable scientific interest even before the beagle returned to england davin's account of the voyage was published as journal of researches into the natural history and geology of countries visited during the voyage of hms beagle around the world under the command of captain fitzroy and abridged popular version Voyage of the Beagle, published in 1845, remains one of the most perspective chronicles of exploration. So HMS Beagle was a 10-gun sailing ship with two mess and square rigged sails, 27 meters long, weighing 240 tons the weight of a large train engine. The maiden voyage of Beagle was to undertake a hydrological survey of Patagonia and Tierra Fugu 
two layers into the voyage, the enormous difficulty of the task led the captain to commit suicide. He was replaced by Robert Fitzroy, who was then the 23-year-old flag lieutenant. Red Spike built the survey with considerable success. Returning to London on October 1830 with four natives from this place whom he hoped to train as missionaries. The year Darwin began his voyage, Beagle had been refitted for circumnavigation in order to fix world longitudinal markings and to complete the charting of the coast of South America. Darwin was a naturalist on board, but not the official naturalist, which was a special and paid position created by the British Admiralty on naval ships making broad geographical surveys. The Navy had appointed the ship's surgeon, Robert M. C. Cormick, as the official naturalist. Darwin's primary role was to serve as a dining companion to the Captain Robert Ritzroy, to whose service his duties as naturalist were secondary. For this reason, it was of no importance for the British Admiralty that Darwin had not distinguished himself academically or even finished his studies at Cambridge. His qualification as a gentleman, good shot, and sportsman were quite sufficient. The voyage of the Eagle was not pleasant cruise. In an account of the voyage published in 1895, 1995, Kate Thompson noted to say that the Beagle was extremely cramped, even more the acceptance of expectations of the time would be a supreme understatement. The ship was after all no longer than the distance between two bases on a basement baseball field. The said I would not I have just room to turn around and that is all. The five year voyage on the Beagle enabled Darwin to observe and think about the wide range of organisms and geological formations. Darwin collected in in the Brazilian tropical forests at Putna Alta on the coast of Argentina. Darwin unearthed fossil bones of a six meter tall giant sloth and the fossil mammals resembling extant species yet recognizably different. The primitiveness and wildness of the Tierra del Fugo Indians at the southern tip of South America impressed Darwin and did the severity of their struggles to subsist in a meager and unrelating environment. On the voyage, Darwin carried with him the first and at, at the time the only published volume of Charles Lyell's Principles of Geology, a gift from Ritzroy. Darwin had also the multi-volume set of Humboldt's personal narratives of travels which inspired him as it did Wallace. HMS Beagle also had a considerable library. Darwin noted Assiduously, the geological features of the many terrains he covered to explain some of the geological uplifting process that shaped the South American landscape. Darwin gathered evidence showing the distribution of marine shells at various locations above sea level. Darwin's account on its voyage on Beagle was published in 1838 in an abridged popular version some years later. And an edition edited by his great grandson Richard Darwin. Cainus, Voyage of the Beagle, remains one of the most perceptive chronicles of exploration published in the 19th century. Next. Alfred Russell Wallace. Wallace was so inspired by the readings, Darwin's Journal of Researchers and other journals of naturalists, explorers, collectors, and he had a close friend, naturalist Henry 
Paul Tabit set off for Brazil in 1848, they intended to collect insects to sell to museums and collection collectors back in England and to seek evidence for species transformations. Their entire collection, including all their notes and diaries, was lost when the ship transporting them back to England in 1852 caught fire and sand. Darwin, on the other hand, returned to England with the collections that he distributed to the experts of the day. This, along with the publications of his journal of researches, establishing his reputation as a naturalist. Wallace spent a further eight years exploring and collecting in waters now Malaysia and Indonesia, this time collecting 125,000 specimens, hundreds of which were species new to science, and laying the foundation for his groundbreaking studies in the distribution of animals or zoogeography, now intended as biogeography. A biogeographical barrier in the Indonesian region identified by Wallis as part of his explorations and research, known today as Wallis Line, separates species with links to Australian from species with East Asian connections. In an interview conducted just before his death in November 1913, Alan started that during this eight-year period in Malaysia and Indonesia, I did a great deal of work on the natural selection theory, and my paper came before Darwin in 1858. It seems that Darwin had been working along the same lines, and shortly after reading my paper, he published his Origin of Species. So Darwin returns to England. After Darwin's return to England in 1836, he was able to dedicate himself to natural history through a substantial income and inheritance supplemented during his lifetime by shared financial management and investment. He married his cousin Emma Wittsworth in 1842, settled in Down House near the town of John in Kent, 23 km, about 14 miles from London, where he and Emma began to raise a large family. Darwin participated in the Dual Man Committee that drafted the Strickland Code in Strickland Code in 1842. This code developed the standard rules of zoological nomenclature, including how species should be named, a code that stands to this day. Strickland Code, very famous. For the last 14 years of his lay age, Darwin lived at home, mostly as a semi and married subject to heart part palpitations, rashes, and gastric discomfort, he could bear neither heat nor cold. Half an hour of conversation beyond his habitual time was sufficient to cause insomnia and hinder his work on the following day. He suffered also from dyspepsy, dyspepsia, from spinal anemia and kidneys, and he could not work more than three hours a day. The cause of Darwinian disability or disabilities is not known. Hypothesis range from parasitic infection, trypanosomes that cause trypanosomiasis, which affect heart and in intestines, to heavy mental, I'm sorry, heavy metal arsenic poisoning from some of the so-called cures of his time, a psychosomatic illness involving severe symptoms of panic disorder. Whatever the cause, his illness isolated him or were used by Darwin to isolate himself from direct contact with much of the world around him. Nevertheless, Darwin maintained enormously important contacts through letters, publications and meetings with colleagues at Town House. He remained extraordinarily well connected socially and academically, responding extensively with naturalists, scholars and readers. When The Origin of Species was published on 24 November 1859, Darwin was completed a nine-week stay in a remote Russia village where he was taking the water cure. When not soaking in cold water or wrapped in wet sheets, Darwin spent his time corresponding with fellow naturalists seeking their support for his theory.
so galapago island is the next topic that's a very important one one experience that layers later had great impact on darwin's thinking about evolution was the month he spent in the black lava covered galapago islands off the coast of ecuador laying 800 km kilometer nearly 500 miles from the mainland This islands contain an exotic collection of land and marine animals and plants including giant tortoises and meter long marine land iguanas as Darwin had noted on the main mainland different islands with environmentally similar habitats were not always occupied by similar species He was particularly struck by the situation in the Galapagos where different species of tortoises and mockingbirds were found on each island insect eating warblers and woodpeckers were absent but other species of seed and insect eating birds were present later this was shown to be related species of finches on astrologers david lake and darius darwin historians were pointed out that although darwin's journals of researches expressed evolutionary for thoughts the significance of his observations on the galapagos islands and else elsewhere did not become apparent to darwin until after his return to england this was especially true for the various galapagos finches which were first classified in england by john gould a leading british ornithologist gould pointed out to darwin that this were related species of finches with different morphology and different combinations of 12 to 13 species occurred on different islands Darwin had not kept notes as to which island was home to which species realization that each island appeared to have its own constellation of species raised the important question what would account for this distribution of organisms in darwin's words it is the circumstance that several of the islands possess their own species of tortoise mocking fish finches and numerous plants the species having the same general habits occupying analogous situations and obviously filling the same place in the natural economy of the archipelago that strikes me with wonder separate and different creator creations make one species in one place slightly different from another species in another place why and more importantly how the beagle voyage stirred darwin to think deeply about the origin of species he began his first notebook on the trans mutation of species late in 1836 at a stern bird it must be eagle darwin came to the view that only changes among species could explain the observation that present species resemble past species and that different species can share similar structures the only cause of similarity in individuals we know is the relationship here is darwin's aim expressed in his own words from the first paragraph of the origin of species when on board hms beagle as naturalist i was much struck with certain facts in the distribution of inhabitants of south america and in the geological rea relations of the present to the past inhabitant inhabitants of that continent these facts seem to be meet to throw some light on the origin of species that mystery of mysteries as it has been called by one of our greatest philosophers on one return home he it occurred to me in 1835 37 that something might perhaps be made out on its this question by partially accumulating and reflecting on all such facts that could possibly have any bearing on it after 5 years work i allowed myself to speculate on the subject and drew up some sorry short notes this i enlarged in 1844 into a sketch of the conclusions which then seemed to me probable from the period of present day i have steadily pursued the same object the differences between flora and fauna of different geographical areas stavin thought must have arisen because not all plants or animals are universally distributed regarding the galapagos island darwin raised the question on the origin of species why on this small points of land which within a late geological period must have been discovered with ocean which are formed of a basaltic lava and therefore differ in geological characters from the american continent and which are placed under a peculiar climate why were there 
അപ്പോറിജിനൽ ഇൻഹാബിറ്റൻസ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് അമേരിക്കൻ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ടാവൻ റിയലൈസ് ദ ഐലൻസ് ജാസ് ദ ഗാലപ്പ് ഗോൾസ് കണ്ടെയ്ൻഡ് ഓൺലി ദോസ് ഓർഗൻ ഓർഗാനിസംസ് ഏബിൾ ടു റീച്ച് ദം ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് എവല്യൂഷൻ കുഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോം ഓൺലി ദോസ് സ്പീഷസ് അവൈലബിൾ സീയിങ് ദിസ് ഗ്രേഡേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഡൈവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് സ്ട്രക്ചർ ഇൻ വൺ സ്മോൾ ഇൻറ്റർമീഡിയറ്റ്ലി റിലേറ്റഡ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓഫ് ബേർഡ്സ് വൺ മൈറ്റ് റിയലി ഫാൻസി ദറ്റ് ഫ്രം ആൻ ഒറിജിനൽ പ്യൂസിറ്റി പ്യൂസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ബേർഡ്സ് ഇൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് ആക്യുപലഗോ വൺ ബേർഡ്സ് വൺ മൈറ്റ് റിയലി ഫാൻസി ദറ്റ് ഫ്രം ആൻ ഒറിജിനൽ ഒക്കെപ്പലഗോ വൺ സ്പീഷസ് ആഡ് ബീൻ ടേക്കൻ ആൻഡ് മോഡിഫൈഡ് ഫോർ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ആൻസ് അൻകവറിംഗ് ദ മെക്കാനിസം ഫോർ ദി ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്പീഷസ് ഹവ് എവർ വസ് നോ വേർ നിയർ ആസ് ഒബ്വിയസ് ആസ് വസ് ദ റിയലൈസേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് സച്ച് ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻ ഹാഡ് ഒക്കേഡ് Next topic we will be learning with the help of next video. Thank you for listening.